Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about the latest and so far, you know, as of now, um, uh, fourth installment of the Scream franchise. Scream 4! Um, yeah. I got the DVD first, um, because, you know, at the time... This was really uh, all that there was, and then the place that I could find, and then I finally found the D or the Blu-ray, and uh, the quality does definitely look better um, in terms of the presentation. Um, in short, um, this film essentially it is a sequel, but in terms of the films that are being done, it's more like poking fun at the various reboots and remakes uh, that took place uh, very predominantly during the 2000s. I mean, of course, it's not exclusive. There were some remakes in the uh, 2000, uh, or the 1990s and the 1980s. And, um, but, you know, 2000s is really where, you know, they uh, did a lot of Remakes, uh, reboots with um, uh, very famous franchise films, um, uh, some with various degrees of success, and um, the film it opens with two false openings of within the Stab universe, you know, uh, like, and you know, people are watching these movies, and it was like, you know. Stab six, stab seven, and then when you finally get to the real opening, people are like, "Oh, this, this is kind of stupid." It's like these movies are sort of like just really dumb, like as sort of uh, kind of commenting on them. the more franchise is like a horror franchise goes on, like more installments, the more these movies, the movies just are bad, and um. As I said last time, the film is the past last film, Scream uh, Four or Three, was supposed to be the final movie, but obviously it wasn't. But the fourth film, and so th these, uh, you know, again, I think it was actually quite appropriate that they talk about the various. reboots and remakes uh, of horror as those were quite prominent um, and um, the, the there's a pattern of uh, that the killers are, are killer killers whoever you know where they're sort of pattering the first film you know remake a reboot angle you know redoing things in the sort of same order of sorts and so you know in this case you know it's also because you know uh, Sydney's coming back to Woodsboro because she wrote a book and she's there to promote her book about how you know she basically doesn't want to be a victim her whole life you know she thought that's all she was and then sort of embraced not being, you know, she embraced not being one, and part of that was to write a book about her experience of, from the, essentially from the first film, the third, and I guess dealing with all that, and, you know, she doesn't uh, have anything against Gail, you know, enough times pass where, you know, you know, obviously she was annoyed at one point, but, you know, you have to let things go, and she does, and uh, Dewey and Gail are married. Uh, the end of the third film, you know, of course, he proposed to uh, Gail uh, from the Marion. You know, she said yes. <clears throat> and he's the sheriff of Woodsboro, so he's a officer again. Um, I would assume he had surgery because of the uh, sort of limp and the arm and stuff uh, that we saw him in two and three 
uh, is no longer a problem. He's able to walk and run and do things normally. Um, and with news of the killings, um, you know, they're looking around to try and see who it is. Who And also with social media, that's another thing, you know, like Facebook. Um, you know, that sort of plays a part into this. Uh, you know, um, one of the characters has a, like a live stream, like a, for a blog. Uh, they go into like a website or a blog and how, you know, they, they talk about how, like some new rules and how, you know, basically in order to not uh, die in a remake or reboot of a horror film, you pretty much have to be gay. Um, and honestly, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I really enjoy this film. Um, I think it's a very good sequel. It's just, you know, you know, what do you say about this kind of film? So many people have talked about it. Um, I saw this in the theater. You know, this was the first Scream film I've seen in the theater, and I've only seen two. This one and, and re-released Scream, the original, so I got to see that. I haven't seen the second and third. Um, but I remember seeing this. Um, wasn't quite 17 yet, but... Uh, it was a very good film, uh, very enjoyable, um, and uh, this was also supposed to be the setup for a new trilogy of uh, films, but, you know, things, uh, like, uh, it didn't perform as well as they hoped. And apparently one of the producers from the first three sued, uh, like the Weinsteins, because uh, she didn't get to be uh, a producer on this film. But apparently one reason she wasn't invited back was because uh, she leaked um, the fact that uh, Sydney, Dewey, and Gail all live. Because if asked, like, if, would there ever be a possible third or a fourth film down the line? Um, and this producer said she, that if uh, David Arquette, Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox all wanted to do another film, uh, they'd all be game, and it would likely happen. This, of course, uh, implied to everybody that all three of them survived and uh the third film which at that point was supposed to be the final film so because of that that uh because of this she uh was not invited to help produce this film and then she uh, had a lawsuit which apparently was part of the reason i guess there wasn't as much of a uh, promotional uh, effort in order to help gain as many people into the theater as they could. Um, personally, though, I think that uh, the film is quite good. Um, it did quite, it did fairly well, um, but it wasn't like a huge success that they were hoping for. But you know, sometimes that happens, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, aside from the original three, you've got uh, Emma Roberts, and then Pent Pentinieri, um, Rory Culkin, um, Mary McConnell, Eric Kunson, um, Mary Shelton, Allison Brie, Adam Brody, uh, Anthony Anderson. Fantastic cast. Um, it's very uh, uh, well done. It's, uh, you know, the whole sort of copying and 
mimicking of the remakes and reboots. Um, you know, uh, it's done very well. Uh, I guess spoilers for uh, the end. As it turns out, uh, Jill, played by Emma Roberts, and um, her friend Charlie, played by Rory Culkin, are the uh, uh, are the killers mimicking um, Billy and Stu. Um, she uh, is setting up her boyfriend um, as the killer, who, um, played by Adam Brody, um, because broke up with her and um, she didn't, was not very happy with how all that uh, turned out and so she uh, frames them uh, but then when it comes to sort of reenact uh, the uh, original you know where you know how Billy and Stu stabbed each other in the sides well she stabs Charlie in the heart because you know all they love a you know, lone survivor. So instead of being like Sydney and Randy, new Sydney and Randy surviving, um, they uh, 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 go and uh, she's like she's gonna be a survivor, sole survivor. So like how Sydney is in certain scenarios, even though there's always others to live with her, like you know. Gail and Dewey, uh, and also in the first film, Randy, but, uh, yeah, Jill wanted just to be famous, that was her whole thing, to be famous, that was really the reason, being her, uh, Sidney Prescott's cousin, you know, uh, she just grew up hearing only, really nothing but Sidney, and that annoyed her, and she wanted to be famous. She wanted to be known. Um, uh, for surviving also. And, um... Uh, her mother is killed in the process of... Uh, all this going on. Um, and, uh... She stabs Sydney uh, To make it, like, you know boyfriend killed her and then uh, Charlie gets stabbed and then he like, shoots or no uh, that she stabs him and then he gets the gun and shoots her boyfriend to you know you know save herself and she's stabbed also and uh, earlier in the film Gail gets stabbed and uh which is a giveaway because you know uh, that you know at a stabathon that they have like it's a secluded area they go and watch all the stab movies back to back and they go to Kirby's house which is played by Ian Pantoneer and um, for like an after party of sorts um, and I know I'm sort of skipping around and going back and forth but really this film you know the I think it's a film that, as time goes on, it's actually aged quite well, considering how movies have done, you know, in terms of remakes and reboots, and how we continue to have so many reboots and remakes, not just for horror, but just in general. Um, I mean, there are still some original films being made, um, not necessarily in the big blockbusters type scale, but, you know, there are still some original films being made, um, um, and I think for this franchise to sort of uh, comment on all of uh, the cliches of all these horror films and the various remake boom, reboot boom that uh, we saw in the 2000s and are still seeing today um, has aged quite well. And this is the 10th anniversary of this film also. This came out 10 years ago.
like five years ago the original scream came out so it was like a like 15 years later there's the fourth film um and uh yeah this is this film you know like uh One thing that's interesting in the character of Kirby was actually supposed to not die. Um, she's not supposed to be dead, but uh, who knows if she'll ever appear in the any future installment. Um, Wes Craven said as such, like in the commentary, that her character is supposed to be alive, but you know, like made sure, like, because she gets stabbed uh, by Charlie, and she's moving around. That was supposed to be an indicator that she's not you know, dead yet. Like, she could be alive. Um, but, you know, these, uh... This film really is one that, uh, you know, I loved and I enjoyed when I first saw it. Um, you know, I've warmed up more to the third film as time has gone on. I mean, I always liked that film. But, you know, I think if that was the definitive end, it would have been a bit of a downer note to end on. I mean, fine, happy ending and all, with all things considering, but, you know, it, it would be one of those endings that I was like, you know, you wish there was more. So, with the fourth film, it's really cool that they are uh, continuing with uh, poking fun and still having some humor and, um, yeah, it's nice to see the original three still being uh, active in this. Wes Craven uh, returned, and um, uh, Kelly, Kevin Williamson uh, returned also as the writer and also a producer, just like he was on the third film, and Wes Craven helped produce this film also. Unfortunately, this is the last film Wes Craven ever directed. Um, he did produce some more stuff here and there, Notably, the uh, Scream TV show, which I have not seen. Um, I've heard mixed things. Some that it's some say it's good. Some say it's not good. Um, but you know, this uh, you know this uh, this film is a I think is a very good continuation from where the uh, you know the trilogy originally uh, you know ended. Um, <clears throat> I do like how the characters, you know, you know Gail, she's not uh, uh, necessarily a reporter now. She's trying to, you know, write more books, but not like fiction instead of like true stuff. Um, you know, she sort of gave up her career of sorts in order to be a life of Dewey and also just to sort of like again, be creative in a non-journalistic sense. And you can see how it's sort of driving her crazy and all. But, you know, her getting stabbed and that at the end with how when Dewey talks to Jill that, you know, Sydney might still be alive, uh, still touch and go, but she, you know, she wakes up, she might not remember a whole lot, so she'll have to help her. Hearing that news, Jill goes to find Sydney in the hospital and to kill her. And then Dewey goes to Gail in the hospital, in her hospital room. And she's recovering, uh, recuperating from her stab wound, and um, how she is doing. And Jill said that they have matching wounds, and how they could maybe write a book together. Mentions that to Gail, who kind of laughs, like, oh, she was stabbed in the shoulder, too. How would she know she, I was stabbed in the shoulder? Which is then an indicator that she was there at the party to be getting stabbed. Um, got stabbed in the, you know, uh, similar to Gail, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, She, uh, 
Mark said, and then Dale or Dewey goes and yeah, Dale, whoever that is, he goes and to go to Sydney's room because you know, no doubt, knowing that she's a killer, how the killer could have only known that, she goes and you know he goes to try and save her, and she does initially, you know, you know Jill goes to Sydney's room and they have a fight, and. uh Here's Dewey coming. She hides in the bathroom and gets like a bedpan. And when he comes in, she smacks him over the head with it to the point where you know, the, it's bleeding. And uh, female officer um, played by. Uh, Mary McDonald. Uh, she comes in also later and uh, saves Gail from being shot because she jail takes uh, Dewey's gun and um, uh, she gets shot by Jill and then Gail, you know, as they're hiding or behind like the bed in the hospital, and then how you know Gail comes up and. During all that, and she's about to, Jill is about to shoot Gail. Sydney, uh, there's like a defibrillator in the room, so she turns that on and cranks it up all the way. And then Sydney electrocutes her in the head, and then she falls to the uh, ground. And um, they go over to see Dewey and now. McDonald is still alive because she has a bulletproof vest on, and uh, you know now Dewey's going to have to be treated for his head wound. Um, and as they're all, the three of them are talking. Uh, Jill is still alive, and there's broken glass from you know Sydney and her fight would be uh, thrown in uh, against like a one of those uh, little cabinets with. Uh, medicine and other things like gauze and such and there's glass on the ground so Jill has a piece of the glass that she's going to try and stab them either of them with probably like I would imagine Sydney first and then Sydney has gets get uh, Dewey's gun and shoots her in the chest and then she falls and basically you know dies and she you see her nose bleeding also and um Outside the hospital, the media is talking about uh, Jill, and now you know she's a survivor, and how she miraculously survived and was able to get through all of this. And of course, you know, sort of poking fun and uh, shining a light how the media, you know, stuff like this happens. They jump on it. They jump on what's going on, and that's sort of a thing that's been through, you know, all these movies. How the media and like murders uh, have taken place. Um, they uh, are all over it, you know. Sometimes uh, reporting things in before everything is completely double checked as if it's actual, you know, it's, if it's actually true or not, and they're just sort of going with whatever. Of course, you know, no doubt the uh, revelation that Jill was the killer with Charlie. Uh, will come out, and how Trevor um, was uh, was really just, you know, innocent. I mean, the worst is, like, you know, broke up with Jill, and uh, she wasn't happy with that, and then he got killed as a result of it. Um, but, yeah. This is a very fu a good film. Um, it's a shame there wasn't any really immediate follow-up, like within a few years after this. Um, Wes Craven apparently was uh, contracted to do uh, two more films. Apparently, Kevin Williamson had a plan to do another trilogy, four through uh, six. But uh, 
because as I mentioned earlier, the uh, uh, you know the uh, box office wasn't as big as they hoped. didn't get a sequel until you know uh, soon you know next month uh, we shall get the fifth scream film titled scream which is a uh, i i'm not fond of the title because it's like you know just because there's certain things we're going back to with scream 5 does that mean what the fifth scream film it doesn't mean you need to just call it scream it's it implies it's a remake or a reboot but it's a actual fifth installment uh, continuating the continuing the story that this film uh, ended on so you know that's just uh, I think for that that's kind of just uh, a bit annoying uh, for me at least some people have no problem with that but I don't know, I, I'm just never fond of when, you know, that happens, when you're doing sequels, and then there's a, a certain installment, and they just name it after the first film, despite the film being a sequel, and not at all a remake or a reboot. Um, that's just, uh, that just annoys me, um, uh, but, you know... We shall see if that film is good. You know, uh, I think all the sequels are actually quite good. You know, sure, the third film for me isn't the best, but for what it is, it's actually quite good. Um, and as an initial end to that uh, this franchise, it was I think it did a very good job. Uh, again, Wes Craven's final film, but you know he he. Really did an excellent job. He really uh, did what he could to honor the previous installments and continue uh, with uh, these characters and this world that has been created by Kevin Williamson and also him. Um, I hope that the you know the new movie will do justice and won't be a real disappointment because then it's like you know it's you know, it doesn't live up to the original uh, that or the original four the first four and what Wes Craven did and doesn't do justice and continuing many people will likely uh, tune out um, again I apologize for sort of going back and forth but you know just re-watching these movies back to back as I did, it was it was really fun and also it was like you're you know, sort of taking quite a bit in. And um Wes Craven, you know, had a cameo in pretty much all of them. He was Fred the janitor in the first film. He was uh, a doctor in the background in the second film. He was a guy walking around uh, the film studio in the third and in here his is actually deleted. He was a coroner when uh Dewey, uh, <clears throat> uh, checks out the crime scene of the first two people who were killed in the film, and uh, he was a coroner there, but, you know, he said like, he liked the scene, but, you know, uh, I guess for just time and stuff, they felt it was better to, um, cut it, but he is in this film, so... You know, he has a cameo in all the Scream films, um, even if it's, it got uh, on the cutting room floor. And um, see that on the, the Blu-ray and the just normal DVD, so that's really cool. This was also a time when the DVDs and <clears throat> Blu-ray combo packs, you know, were the... Not always did the Blu-rays have most of the special features. Sometimes, you know, both DVD and Blu-rays would have the same features, special features. Um, 
But yeah, uh, very good sequel. Um, uh, very worthy of the tr to follow up the trilogy with, and uh, I always enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoy all four installments. They're all really fun to watch. Um, and yeah, and next time I guess I'll just do one uh, last video to sort of like just sum up all my feelings and thoughts on these films. And I guess whatever hopes I have for the first, uh, or the next film I should say. Um, one last thing I wanted to say is I think it's interesting in how in all the sequels they always mention Billy and Stu. Like, you know, the original killers are the best. And I do agree <laughs> with that sentiment. Um, you know, Ski Orge and Matthew Lillard uh, gave excellent performances. And were very uh, convincing and believable as the characters they play. Um, I do think Matthew Lillard uh, gave such a great job that he, his performance could have been, uh, like, could be seen as Oscar-worthy get Nami for Best Supporting Actor, you know, regardless if he would have won or not, that's another story altogether, but, you know, he was really good in that film. Um, I think it's interesting how they keep mentioning those guy, those two, you know, in this film, you know, Billy and Stu, Billy and Stu, is this Charlie, and then he's sort of amping himself up and sort of getting prepared like Stu, but unlike Stu, he doesn't die right away at got stabbed or you know that or that's what happened Stu didn't get killed right away when he was stabbed Charlie unfortunately got stabbed in the heart though he was still a killer so you know he would have probably died anyway but still it didn't turn out the way he thought um, but yeah I, I just think it's interesting how those two always get mentioned in all of these movies Perhaps that's to signal and say, you know, the original is the best, which I agree with. You know, it's very rare and hard to top the original in really any franchise. I mean, it can be done, but it doesn't happen too often. Um, and yeah, with that, I am done talking about each of the Scream films individually, as of now at least. I hope to see uh, the fifth film next month. It's January, but you know, and snow can happen and such. So, uh, of course, weather will be a determining factor there. But yeah, um, don't know exactly when I will talk about it after I, when I see it, but well, no doubt I will uh, discuss it. At some point, even if I wait for like the Blu-ray, just so like enough time has passed that people who really want to see it have seen it. Um, but yeah, that's really all I have to say. Um, I hope all of you are having a great day. Hope you all have a great week, and uh, have a great weekend. And I will see you all of you next time. Take care. Bye.